last episode we talked about how Mount McKinley was officially being changed back to Denali, and so now there are other groups of people that want changes to um, land landforms that have names that are given to, uh, I guess historically, America, white American. They've opened the door. Back so to here it comes. Native American origins. Um, although the the specific case I'm talking about is Harney Peak, which is the uh, the biggest mountain in the Black Hills of uh, South Dakota. It's a uh, you know it's a small mountain. It's about a third of the size of Denali, but you know the Black Hills, of course, used to be sacred land for uh, the Lakota Native American tribes, really. And, and of course, this was promised to them time after time, treaty after treaty, and then treaty after treaty was broken and uh, the Americans of course ended up taking it all and uh, once they found gold and they named uh, Harney Peak after um, a general who uh, you know he uh, he was a Civil Civil War era um, general I don't know a whole lot about him um, but apparently he was a he's described as a brutal army general whom Lakota tribes blame at least for killing 86 people, including women and children, under Chief Little Thunder's flag of truce in the Battle of Ash Hollow in 1855. So that bit of information was uh, a little surprising to me, and that's why uh, many people, not just the the Sioux, but other people want to change the name to something else, although I didn't see another name mentioned. They, they don't have one. That's the amazing they, thing. Yeah. Didn't it say... Uh, he, where is it? Uh, the South Dakota Board uh, on Geographic Names, which advises the federal board to settle on um, Hinan Kaga, or making of owls in English. Um, is that? Oh, I didn't see that. Yeah, it was like in parentheses, and then of course they brought up there's some ridiculous federal policy of not putting parentheses in a title, which makes sense, but... Well, yeah, but like, obviously it wouldn't actually have the parentheses in Yeah, that, that, that's kind of what I thought when I read it. I'm like, are they on oh, the sign? You have to have the English translation of it? I mean, I don't see why you would have to have that. Yeah, my, my problem, uh, as opposed to... Uh, to uh, what, what's the name of Mount McKinley now? Denali. Denali, yeah. Oh, I beat him so, to it. Denali. So He's Denali. So Denali has been called Denali and has um, was repeatedly asked for to be changed throughout its history. In fact, the the uh, um, when it was changed, it was something like five years, uh, I think it was changed in the 50s and was requested to be changed by the tribe within five years of it being changed, and then like was advised by the local government in the late 70s. Um, this is something that's been a long time coming. Um, right. And, and a lot of locals just simply refused to call it Mount McKinley, so when you have that kind of difference, there there is at least some sort of precedent for changing it. Here, they had to have a board of regents decide on a name. You don't get to change names just because you decide it's time to change it. Um, or it's politically correct all of a sudden. But yeah, yeah. wasn't well, that fascinating? 40 years, congressman in Ohio was able to block that name being changed for 40 yeah. years when you have really somebody heard. when you have a congressman from uh, a state that has nothing to do with Alaska <laughs> you know mm. nobody shares a border with Alaska um, that is frightening that exert that kind of influence then that's a bit of a problem um, but here th that's not something that's just some Senator blocking legislation or anything. This is something that, hey, if Denali can change it, we can too. Um, but they're not showing anything in terms of a a precedent for for change. They're just deciding, hey, it's time for change, and that's not the way names change. That's not the way the English language works. And uh, yeah. like the uh, so, 
at the, we do get to kind of say what name what things are named as, but I mean, talk to anybody who like has been through any of these kinds of name changes because it happens on the local scale, yeah. any number of places. I'm sure you guys can talk about street streets. names. Yeah, streets that have changed names because uh, I remember in Las Vegas there was a street name change to uh, Martin Luther King Boulevard. Um, and everybody's kind of gone over to it, but it used to be Industrial Street because that's where all the industrial stuff was. Um, was. <laughs> and the thing in is, Mexico the, now. what gets really strange on that is actually Martin Luther King and Industrial Meat and changed names halfway through. So a lot of people just call it one or the other, and for the longest time it was just all industrial and then Martin Luther King has kind of started taking over because that's in the more prominent part of town. But that's actually only in the last, like, five years or so. So, in reality, the name that they decide on in Congress doesn't matter. It's, it's what the people decide and in their colloquial use. But that's so hard to nail down that... Um, and, it can and their decision can affect the colloquial use. Right. But... But I think their decision should be based on the colloquial use, not the other way around. Dictating what it says on the map and the signs, the big deal. And that's Cong that's the Department of the Interior. Uh, I just find it amazing that we even have a board of geographic names in our government. <laughs> I mean, how do you get appointed to the board of geographic names? And they sit around and they're like, we've got too many mud lakes. We need to change the name of some of these. I mean, this was this is a part of the story I found ridiculous. Well, yeah. it, when you have states that have like thirty or forty mud lakes, it's that's a bit of a problem. <laughs> I mean, that's just that is, that is ridiculous. I, I had no idea this existed, though. I mean, who's on this board? I mean, to, you know, I need to get some former geography teachers or something but uh well here's another thing that i thought about too with that is that if you have 30 or 40 mud lakes or mud creeks or you know wolf creek whatever it is how is it that you can't come up with other names when there are so many awesome possibilities Words. for well i mean think about all the great historical figures alone that we could yeah. we could name all these places for i don't even I mean, care if it's random like change well, one of those mud lakes to uh some obscure politician who really made a big difference, and you know, from. Or, I mean, state. come on, just I like stuff that's just cool name. I mean, this article demonstrates we we're not even confined to the English language here. I mean, what did you say? The they're wanting to change the name of this to. Yeah, that was uh, a mouthful. The in, translation. In Han of, ha, yeah, it Han uh, Hanan Kaga. I, I keep on seeing that and thinking it's supposed to be Japanese. You know, you know people would call it Kaga Lake. They would. They would. <laughs> There's a lot, I can think of a lot of inappropriate jokes for that name too. A bunch. Who cares? And, not that. <laughs> yeah, it, whether or not people uh, people are going to be foolish about 14 that. Fourteen-year-olds would be like Hannah Kaga, your mama. Yeah, but I teach them. I know. <laughs> All right. You behave but, yourself now. <laughs> um, you know. But the thing with mud lakes and that is that a lot of uh, the a lot of the reason behind all of that naming is because that's just the colloquial use, right. and and you know trying to impose changes on colloquial use is hard. Especially there's also mm -hmm. a history of the opposite of that happening, where street names are tried to be changed, and people like literally go and like spray paint the the old name and stuff like mm -hmm. that. I can name specific instances uh, yeah. in Nevada and also specific instances here in San Luis Obispo where people have tried to change names and that got it passed through the legislature and then like only a couple years later Price Street is back to Price Street. Um, That's so silly to me. Like why are people so stuck in like uh, the old ways to, I mean, it, it just seems silly to me that people are so... Uh, tied to the old names of locations like they're well, so offended when you get used to calling as something a particular something and then you're suddenly told by some foreign board that your name was inadequate that what you've been calling it is wrong this whole time and you should listen to them it's like who someone the heck, coming who the in heck are the, yeah who the heck are they to tell you what to call 
something that's that you have much more of a personal relationship to than um than yeah, that so I the colloquial you. usage is is a much more powerful thing and that's why denali is is was good to be changed because that actually yeah. fit the the colloquial usage as opposed to this where not so much <laughs> here's a question what about those the names that like harney we know is somebody who committed bad things like he uh, he killed women and children allegedly I, i'm pre i'm not having researched it myself but if if you have somebody i mean custer's another example you could say i mean there's so many things that are named after george custer that i mean but it doesn't even there are there are evil men that in history that have lots of things named after them don't you think that maybe they should be renamed if they did bad things <laughs> Well, I don't even know that that's the biggest issue here because there's another part of this article that was just appalling. And he mentioned local area things that uh, he could mention. You know, it said there's 866 places in the United States of America that have the word squaw in the name. Yeah. And they've changed 246 of them. Yeah, but where I live, there is a place. I kid you not, last time I went by there, the sign was still there. It's called Dead End End Lake. There's a famous ski resort called Squaw, Squaw Valley. Um, Jeez. It, but I mean, that okay, but you, you, you gotta guys understand are still kind of staying off topic here. But my, you didn't answer my question. I'm not, I don't care about the article. I'm saying, just in theory... Is it okay to have all these things named after essentially uh, bad guys, people that did horrible when things? When is it ever going to end? I mean, I there's no doubt in my mind Custer was a horrible, you know, he committed atrocious things. But it's like, when is it going to end? It gets down to the point where it becomes political, where it becomes racial, and it's but, like we want to get rid of everything named look, Robert, after a U.S. officer who was involved in the Plains Indians Wars. Yeah, and, and furthermore... And if you change it to Sitting Bull, you're like, well, Sitting Bull's warriors killed a lot of people. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And and furthermore, um, you know, where, where it's talking about, it doesn't even mention the Grattan Massacre, but... Um, which is well, kind of what it's talking about. The eighty-six people. It's talking about the Grattan massacre, but that's always kind of done with the 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 um, scare quotes on the side of it. It's yeah. kind of like you know Boston massacre. Um, you don't. Oh, yeah, even Martin even Martin Luther King Jr. You know he was a womanizer. Okay, let's. I mean he wasn't a perfect. Yeah, guy. Like I said but, there's but, no end to it. But at the same time, you kind of contradict yourself there, Robert, because a few weeks ago you were saying. You know about the Confederate flag. You know we we have to uh, we can't just uh, whitewash history. We have to tell history. Like we no, have to I mean, remember what name, really happened. What you know? And I when you say, name I something, don't... when you name something, you're honoring that person. No, not really. Not necessarily. Okay, that's a good argument. I can I can definitely name a number of uh, I freaking um, have a book here that I know the author of. Um, that uh, is talking about place names and that, and I can, especially when it's talking about like the Price children down in Pismo. There's a there's a street there's two streets named after his two boys who, rather famously, set two people uh, two visitors to Pismo ablaze just for fun. Like, and I'm not even joking. They really did just for fun. They said it in court, um, because it was fun, and. Uh, there's two streets named after those kids. Hmm. Obviously, nobody thought those those were people worthy of honoring, but they're part of the history there. Rancho Pismo was owned by the Price family for quite a while. Um, so that entire land and the oil interests that started coming in later was were very much tied to that family. So in naming it that, they're not honoring them, they're just stating what was there. Um, there's any number of, there's a street in, in, in uh, there's a number of schools that are named after Joaquin Marietta 
Um, that wasn't a good guy. <laughs> you know, yeah, although you'll hear... You always, is that how you pronounce him? I always said Hokeen. No, it's Joaquin. Okay, because I, I, I'd never heard anyone say it. Joaquin, yeah. kind of like Christopher Walken. Yeah, it's a, it's a Spanish name, so... Yeah, I always said Hokeen. Yeah. Well, I, I, was, I hear what you guys are saying. Uh, but it's like culture, it's something's going to offend everybody. I mean, I've got this here in my notes. I mean, some, you know, to pretty much right. anything, you know, it can offend somebody. And it's like, when does it ever end? Yeah, as a, as a fan of history, though, I uh, I guess I'm being a bit selfish here because I, I see an opportunity. Hey, we could, there are a lot of historical figures that I feel like they could get more attention and maybe this is the one way to do oh, it. Well, I mean, this yeah, guy, I've never heard of him. It. I'd never heard of this general. Now, I don't doubt that he was involved in ordering troops to go. Yeah. Now, this was an ugly, ugly chapter of history, but, um, you know, they mentioned here, you know, that's a, you know, they called it white supremacy, you know, that the white man would come in and uh, rename stuff, you know, because they were the dominant culture. And it's like, well, what is this in the reverse? You know, if you're going back in the other direction. They were also the dominant um, number of people. The so. political back and forth is kind yeah. of what I'm saying. It's just like John Brown was a hero. Now, now, he's, now this generation thinks he's a raging psychopath terrorist. Now he's back to being a hero. Andrew Jackson used to be insanely popular. I mean, they call it the Jacksonian era, and today, you know, they think he was just a raving maniac and one is... Uh, you know, picture off the twenty dollar bill. Hey, was, there's a lot of good things a, about Andrew Jackson. It's a battleground that goes back and forth. It just it's and, tiring. And furthermore, on all this stuff, it's like you always should be deferring to lo uh, to to local use uh, local colloquial standards. You know, there um, there's a reason why that name caught on. Um, and there's a long history behind all this. This, this is why. Etymology is such a powerful um, historical tool. Because yeah, but but uh, we, yeah, go on. Sorry, I kind of cut you off. <laughs> I'm just saying uh, somebody had to first name that that street or name that mountain. It, it started somewhere. Yeah, it's been like that. What you know, ever since they named it 100 years ago, 150 years ago. But that doesn't mean you can't just change it again, and then it will become common usage again, and people will forget within probably uh, a few years that it was changed, and it wouldn't be that big a deal. They'd be like, oh, yeah, that's Martin Luther King Jr. Road or MLK Boulevard, yeah, whatever, like in most other places. They don't care. Like they, it, where I, I live near Lawrence, Kansas, Lawrence, they change the street names. It seems like every couple of years they're, they're changing a street name. and Like Walmart rearranges stuff, so you have to go through their store to find the uh, summer sausage. I buy more. What? <laughs> that drives me insane. I like stability. Yeah, yeah. and I need to be where I expect to find them. But you'll often oh, get a lot of old timers okay. who who will remember the name changes and just sit there whining about it for <laughs> years, if not like decades. I mean, I know I know people here who are complaining about things like this. And they're complaining about name changes that go back to the 1850s. And they're complaining about it like it that happened within living memory. Um, wow. Generational that's, that's, that's crazy. That's more than a century. And yet, that's because all the, the white men came and, and took our land. It's like, first of all, you're oh. not Mexican. Second of all, <laughs> it was a long time ago. <laughs> oh, the white gill runs deep, though. Deep. I mean, you know, they were mentioning it here with the offensive stuff. And, you know, that was how they ended the article was if it's a offensive or derogatory to a particular racial or ethnic, gender, or religious group, you know, well, we've just got to get rid of it. But they did mention, I mean, just the cost of all the new maps and all the new road signs and all their tourist material has to be reprinted done over with and that's confusion and people show up you know expecting you know Harney Peak and now it's Owl Peak or whatever you know got three or four different names it's confusing 
Well, that kind of thing tends to even out after a little while. You know, people get used to the new name. It takes a couple years, and then everybody just starts. And I mean, like with Martin Luther King Boulevard in in um, Las Vegas, that everybody just kind of started using it, despite the contention of the old the the actual history behind the name Industrial Street, um, and and like purposefully forgetting yeah. that there was industry there. Um, and there's actually a history of, of ignorance of that kind of stuff within the uh, city council. Yeah, there's um, a lot more to be said about it, though, if you're changing it from a person. You're taking Mount McKinley and changing it. It's way more, you know, affrontive to people, if that's even a word. Uh, you know, if it's industrial street, okay. But if you're changing it like a, you know, it's named after a person, you know, there's a lot more to be upset by. Yeah. If you're changing, you know, if you're changing Robert E. Lee Drive to Martin Luther King Jr. Drive, you're not just changing a name; you're making a really <laughs> big statement. <laughs> no, that's, that's I mean, you're quite making a, a huge one. That's quite a statement, yeah. Yeah. Uh huh. Hmm. And that's obviously what's at root here. I mean, the Lakota that still is their ancestral homeland. I understand it entirely, uh, considering this was a general that went in there and had a lot to do with, uh, you know, basically taking their land. So, I mean, that's what this really is about, you know, and in that sense, I will say I, I agree with what they're saying and thinking 100%. Yeah, but there are definitely ones like Mud Lake that I could definitely get behind changing. Because... There was a few <laughs> less Mud Lakes. Yeah, like there's a lake South here Dakota. called the uh, Laguna Lake, and if you know your Spanish, Laguna just basically means lake. So we have a <laughs> a lake that's called Lake. Oh. Oh, we have, wanna... we have a we have a valley that has a fairly steep grade going up it that's known as the Cuesta Grade, which basically means grade grade. <laughs> um, you know, it's it's problematic. <laughs> yeah. I do want to correct my because it just popped into my head. I do remember a few. My sister lives in uh, Canadian Texas, so she has to drive by it all the time. And it's been a while since I've been out there. But probably two or three years ago, she did come up to me when she saw me. Said, "You never." They changed the name. You know, I said it was Dead End in Lake. I think she said they changed it to Broken Leg Lake. And they actually named it because there was some settlers chasing after a uh, young Native American, and they did shoot him, and they chased him down, and I think he actually fell and broke his leg there, and then later he died there. Uh, so they literally called it that because that was where they literally <laughs> murdered this guy. Gosh. And I think they changed it. Uh, yeah. That memory's coming back to me. But that kind of insensitivity built into the names, it oh, yeah. actually is a, is kind of a good thing because it encourages interest and and yeah, the story lives on because of that name. Yeah, and despite the insensitivity built into the name, um, you know, history is not really about being sensitive. It's yeah, about it's like, getting to the hard facts. And I and, wouldn't have known that story if it wasn't for that name. You have a one hundred percent valid point. So. I have no problem with contentious names. Um, hell, I, I think we ought to encourage it a little bit um, to a point. Starts uh, conversations, and we are getting way too sensitive as a society. Certainly. But also, you know, be, uh, shamelessness is a virtue. And, um, you know, when we have somebody who's an Indian fighter who... Um, didn't really have anything to do with the with the particular area, unfortunately. But um, you know, if for instance he was actually one of the ones who were fighting in the Black Hills um, during those series of wars, um, and had been part of all that, then what would be the problem? Besides, yeah, it's contentious, mm -hmm. but it's purposely contentious. Mm -hmm. Sometimes when they change the name back uh, to a Native American name, that can be 
just as offensive um, because there's a street name in Olathe, close to where I live, <laughs> Olathe, Kansas. Uh, there's Black Bob Road, which uh, Black Bob was a oh, Shawnee gosh. chief, and that was a pejorative. The what what they called him, like I, I don't I don't think it was meant to be something that was necessarily flattering, but it was. That's, that's what history name, records him as. So, what, yeah, the white settlers called him that, and that's what now what they named the road after. So he's always going to forever be known as Black Bob. <laughs> Did you guys <laughs> notice this other thing? I, I had tossed this paper aside. So I was ready to be done with it. But did you guys notice this other statement in here? There are 617 places with Negro in the title. And mm. it said most of them were named that after a 1963 U.S. Secretary of the Interior banned the very similar but much more offensive N-word. Are we avoiding that mm, word in, yeah. on this podcast? Yeah, we're, uh, we're keeping this. kind of educated. Really I don't like saying it anyway, but because I know it is... I don't mind saying it because, so, you know, <laughs> as I said, it's shamelessness is all over Uncle Tom's cabin. I won't do it, uh, but because I know it bothers people a lot. So, but literally, most of them became that after the Department of Interior had to say we're not using this word in names anymore. That is crazy. Yep. But that's 1963. Yeah. All right. That was. Anything yeah. else you want to share about that? That was a nice little discussion about that. It was. <laughs> and like I said, we can go on and on forever about just little stories. Mm -hmm. I try to keep it short. But... 